Welcome aboard, fellow enthusiasts, as we embark on another incredible video. Thank you for joining us today as we dive into Felix Kelly. Felix Runcy Kelly 3 February 1914 3 July 1994 is a New Zealand-born graphic designer, painter, stage designer, interior designer and illustrator who lived the majority of his life in the United Kingdom. He sometimes signed his illustration and cartoon work fix. As we venture forward, let's examine early life in detail and gain a deeper appreciation for its significance. Born in Auckland, New Zealand, Kelly was the second son of Felix Vincent Kelly, a prosperous engineer, and his much younger wife, Horton's Agnes Kelly Runcie. Kelly attended King's College but was mostly homeschooled in his younger years. He trained as a graphic artist and designer and also sold the occasional cartoon. His father went bankrupt in 1933 and his mother left him to live in England. Kelly left New Zealand in 1935 and joined his mother in London. He never returned to New Zealand. In London Kelly was soon employed as a graphic designer at Lintus, the advertising wing of Unilever. At the outbreak of the Second World War he enlisted in the Royal Air Force where he became a navigating officer. In 1943 he suffered a severe illness that ended his active service and resulted in Kelly focusing on his painting. Now, let's shift our attention to artistic career. Kelly's paintings were influenced by the Surrealists. His specialization in domestic architecture and regular commissions saw him develop a romantic style that found more favor with his clientele and often included a number of recurring motifs such as red and white striped deck chairs and items of mechanical engineering such as hot air balloons, paddle steamers, railways, trains, trams, and lighting fixtures. His paintings were meticulously executed. Houses were painted to an architecturally accurate standard but often contrasted with an untamed, almost sinister landscape. Kelly's first one-man show was in 1943 at the Lefebvre Gallery. This was a success. Herbert Reed, the writer and art critic, bought a painting and invited Kelly to illustrate the second edition of his short novel, The Green Child. Kelly accepted the commission. Reed returned the favour by writing the introduction to the book Paintings by Felix Kelly published in 1946 by Falcon Press. In 1944 a larger exhibition of Kelly's works opened at the same gallery with works by Lucian Freud and Julian Trevelyan in their joining rooms. Kelly accepted numerous commissions for paintings, murals and for illustration work. His commissions led him to visit and stay at many of the grandest country houses in the United Kingdom. His personality, wit, and charm ensured he was often invited back by his wealthy clients and, in some cases, developed into lifelong friendships. In 1947 he was invited to the United States by the New York Gallery Portraits, Inc. Connast Publications commissioned him to paint a number of important American houses and the publication of these works led to more commissions in the United States. The same year he also illustrated for the Lilliput magazine. He fulfilled commissions in the UK, United States, Russia, North Africa, the Far East and the Caribbean. In addition to painting he was often in demand as a moralist and interior designer. His own apartment was photographed and featured in magazines a number of times. He completed a mural for the Banqueting Hall of the Royal Palace, Kathmandu, Nepal, murals in a number of Union Castle and Cunard liners, but probably his most well-known commission was the four murals painted in the Garden Hall at Castle Howard in 1982. These murals were commissioned by George Howard and paid for with the location fee from the Bride as she'd revisited television production. Kelly also designed the Kelly car at Castle Howard, a little fairground-style train for conveying visitors round the grounds. Kelly also worked on developing architectural ideas for his clientele. He produced an artist's impression of a Palladian temple for Sebastian de Ferranti, who then worked with various architects to realize the design. De Ferranti chose Julian Bicknell to build the house which was completed in 1986 later Kelly worked on the cave, a modern grotto, at Henbury Hall. 
Kelly Remedell, the house of Sir Michael Blake at Cornhill on Tweed and designed it as a Gothic dower house. On the request of Charles, Prince of Wales, Kelly produced an artist's impression of an improved design of the Prince of Wales residence, Higrove House in Gloucestershire. This became the inspiration of the remodelling of Higrove. Kelly also produced set designs for a number of theatre productions, including production, A Day by the Sea, 1953, The Haymarket. This production starred Sybil Thornick and John Gielgud production, world premiere of the opera Nelson, 1954, Sadler's Wells Theatre production, The Merchant of Venice, The Old Vic production, The Last Joke, 1960, The Phoenix. Kelly illustrated a number of books, including a very successful collaboration his friend Elizabeth Burton, whose four-volume series on the domestic interiors and furnishings of Elizabethans, Jacobans, Georgians and early Victorians ideally fit Kelly's aesthetic. His tendency towards the surreal and sinister was reflected in the dust jacket work he did for Faber and Faber's Best of Series, including Best Horror Stories 1957, Best Detective Stories 1959, and Best Tales of Terror 1962, as well as a beautiful wraparound dust jacket plus all internal illustrations for Haunted Houses 1956 by Joseph Braddock. He also illustrated Willite Stories 1947 by Rhoda Broughton, A Strange Adventure in the Life of Miss Laura Mildmay 1947 by J. Sharon Lafan, The Desperate Art, a novel 1955 by John Rosenberg, Pilgrim's Pleasure, The West Country 1959 by Alan Ivimi, London 1960 by Ivor Brown, Castle Howard 1972 by George Howard, Lincolnshire Churches their past and their future edited by Henry Thorold. As we progress through this video, let's shift our attention towards death and uncover its hidden depths. Kelly was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease in 1992 and died in Devon in 1994. His partner, the garden designer Vernon Russell Smith inherited his estate. Now, let's shift our perspective and explore work in public collections through a fresh lens, unlocking new perspectives. Kelly's archive of sketches, photographs and papers is held by the Museum of New Zealand Teapopper Tongarua, who also own two paintings The R.W. Norton Art Foundation owns 23 paintings Hawke's Bay Museum and Art Gallery owns 8 paintings Various British public institutions own 7 paintings A second Kelly archive that consists of the research papers of Kelly academic Drive Donald Bussett, as well as original Kelly material is available at the East H. McCormick Research Library. Auckland Art Gallery Toy Oat Makita Psawabland Art Gallery can make spore art and ID shards. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your support and I'll see you in the next video.